think. Well, what do you say we get started? Let's, <laughs> all right, let's, let's do get it. Started. Okay, so <laughs> let's stop for, playing around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so first of all, let me just say this is being recorded and this will be made available on Drupal.tv. Um, so I just want to make sure everybody is aware of that. Um, next, I'll say thank you to everyone for attending. Um, this is, I think, kind of the first um, one of these types of webinars that we've done, uh, the community working group has done. So um, looking forward to doing this one and more in the future. Um, so I will introduce uh, a quick introduction to Dr. Michelle Drapkin, who is one of the community working group's uh, brand new subject matter experts. Her area is mental health. Um, she, um, well, she'll tell you all about her, her credentials in a second. I mentioned already that J.D. Flynn, a member of our community, is the other uh, mental health subject matter expert. And just as a, as a quick overview, um, community working group subject matter experts are there to basically help the community working group when we have issues that we suspect might involve mental health issues. So um, we do not pretend to be the source of, of knowledge of, of much of anything for that matter. Um, but we, and we have been building out this team of subject matter experts that we can tap when necessary. Um, the other side of our recent expansion is a uh, community health team, um, which a Amy June is, is part of, Amy June Heinlein. Um, and they are tasked with things like this, helping us find um, more proactive ways of promoting community health. So with that, I will stop talking and uh, introduce uh, Dr. Dropkin. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm super excited um, to be here. I, you know, and I'll tell you a little bit more about myself, but even just the opportunity to get dressed, um, you know, put on some real clothes. I even put on a little bit of like perfume this morning for you guys. Um, so it's, you know, we are in such a weird, unusual, unprecedented situation. And so it's really thinking about how do we maintain our well-being in general, um, and in particular within the context of COVID-19 and being isolated. Um, most, if not uh, many of us, um, are isolated in our homes. Um, so I'm calling in from the corner of a room in my house where I spend most of my time um, which is unusual. I, I do often get out of the house <laughs> um, and I have a, um, an office in my town. But so let me tell you a little bit about myself just to give you context of um, who I am and um, what, what I'm bringing to the table to be able to help you and how I might be able to relate. So I have my PhD in clinical psychology. I've, I've spent time um, in traditional academic settings. I was on faculty at University of Pennsylvania. I'm also a licensed clinical psychologist, um, both in Pennsylvania and New Jersey, um, and soon New York. Um, and so I practice what I preach. Um, I just don't study it or research it. Um, and I've also spent time in industry um, as a behavioral scientist, um, both at Johnson & Johnson and then more recently um, at a health tech startup out of Silicon Valley. And so although I, I am very new to the Drupal community. Um, I have a good sense of the tech world and, um, you know, how fast paced it could be um, and how challenging it can be. And, you know, and, I, and so I have, a, I have a sense of potentially what you might be struggling with, but there's a, but that's, I'm not going to make any assumptions. Um, I, I'm also a fellow human. Um, and so I often talk about humans helping humans. And part of why I say that is um, because we, we are all in this soup together. And so this is a, a term we use um, in my industry to really talk about, you know, th that we, we're all in this together. This is such a unique time where I am experiencing very similar stressors that you also are experiencing. Um, and so a lot of my conversations with my patients, um, so I do run a private practice in addition to the consulting I do, um, and a lot of those conversations are about like how this is a struggle. Um, how are you managing to get groceries? Um, you know, what, how are you managing to relate to the people in your household? Um, where are you getting takeout from? Who has um, curbside pickup? I live in Metuchen, New Jersey, right outside of um, New York City. So a, a direct commute. And so our town and our area has been hit pretty hard by this and so it's this it's all of this and 
this is global, right? So this is one of those truly unique times where we are all in the soup together. Um, and part of why I'm excited to be here is so we can all think through this together about really how to support our well-being um, and really manage ourselves. And these are tools and strategies that you can use going forward. So I will I will try and pause as often as possible. Um, and JD, please, you know, keep me honest. Feel free to interrupt me if there's if there's something that's coming up. Um, but I'd like this to be as interactive as possible in our our setting and our format so that this really can help meet your needs and then, you know, and the needs of other people who might watch this of, at recording time. So I wanted to start just by talking about like what well-being is and thinking about the various buckets of well-being. Um, and I found this great graphic, which I thought really kind of hits on the various buckets. So why don't you just take a look at it for a second, um, and I'll talk through pieces of it, but I don't, um, you know, I don't want to lecture at you for too long, but just thinking about, you know, the, how are you doing? When I, I often say, um, hey, like, take your temperature, right, and which has a whole different connotation in this current setting, but like, literally thinking about when you wake up in the morning, how are you doing, and thinking across these various buckets of well-being, um, you know, where are you at with your job? Um, many of us have been impacted um, with our work and whether we're impacted currently or we're worried about the future, there's a lot of fear and uncertainty. Um, I certainly can relate to that with my current um, setting, also my husband, and it's just, it's one of those things where you're just, it's not as stable as it was. Um, you know, your emotional well-being, um, I hear a lot about social well-being, you know, how are you connecting with others both inside your um, household and outside of your household, um, and it just being social is so much more complicated these days. Intellectually, you know, how are you stimulating yourself and your mind and growing? Um, and then physical, which is something, you know, I'll talk about also today is really thinking about like, how are we taking care of our bodies? Um, it's been since the beginning of the pandemic, it's been one of my biggest concerns. So not just health of worrying about maintaining yourself from um, getting or contracting the virus, or if you get it, how do you take care of yourself? But even just moving around your home and really just moving, which it's so, it would be really easy for me to sit in this corner for probably 10 hours at a time. And I, I just don't do it because I know that um, not being physically active is going to really impact my emotional well-being and it's just going to be a ripple effect. So think about these well-being buckets as we go through um, some of our content today and thinking about, you know, what, where are you doing really well um, and where might be there some opportunity to really take a an assessment and think about, well, how do I really um, lean into that? So here's our plan for today, is I'm gonna take you on a tour of what, what I'm sort of calling a coping skills buffet. Um, I might've been a little over ambitious, um, but what I really wanted you to be able to walk away from today with is a couple of coping skills that feel like a good fit for you. Um, and so we're going through a buffet. So it's like you're walking down um, which, you know, if you can imagine back to the time you used to walk down a, bu a buffet um, and you're kind of picking in different pieces and maybe taking one spoon of this, one spoon of that, and then you're going to step back and think about, well, what do I want more of? Um, and part of what I'm going to try and do today is give you a little bit of taste of all of these different coping skills and then give you the resources to be able to go back for second helpings um, and a full meal if that's what you really want because there's lots of opportunities to do that. Um, and so this really is gonna take us on a broad brush tour of various coping skills and strategies. Um, and I'll say this probably multiple times, um, but I am definitely open to you reaching out afterwards if you want any additional resources. I have some in the deck, but, um, but if there's anything you um, need help with, please like let me know and I'll connect you with the appropriate resources, books, websites, all that great stuff. Um, but I actually wanted, so JD, before I do this, I just want to check to see if there's anything that I'm missing in our Q&A or chat box. No questions right now. Fantastic. Um, so if everyone is willing, I'm going to ask you, um, as someone who's um, been on many webinars 
um, I often find myself navigating, I may have the webinar in a tab and I'm navigating over um, to something else and then maybe I'm on my phone and oh my gosh, I am certainly not one-minded, right? I'm definitely not present for the content. Um, and if you're willing, I'm gonna ask you to really turn your phone upside down. Um, you don't even have to navigate away from whatever tab you're on because I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes in a second if you're willing and join me um, in a little bit of a mindfulness visualization exercise that I think will really help set us up for a really effective um, webinar here to really start to kind of think about the framework that we'll talk about. And so I like to give you kind of a little bit of an experiential exercise um, to engage us and it means being present and one-minded. And I promise it's only about three to five minutes um, and that there's probably not um, a life or death situation that's gonna happen during that time, probably. Can't make any guarantees. But so if you're willing, I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and get yourself seated in a comfortable position. Um, you may be calling in from bed, so go ahead, get relaxed in bed. Um, wherever you are, um, just go ahead and make sure you're in a comfortable position that you feel like you can stay in for a few minutes. And if you're open to it, go ahead and drop your eyes closed. Um, and we're gonna start by just taking a few deep breaths, um, really breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. And just breathe for a moment, just really noticing the rise and fall of your breath. And as you breathe, I'm going to ask you to start visualizing yourself beside a gently flowing stream. And notice in this stream, and this could be one that you've been to, one that you could really bring up in your mind's eye. And notice that there are some leaves that are floating along the surface of the water. For the next few moments, I'm going to ask you to take each thought, each feeling, each sensation that enters your mind and place it on a leaf and let it float by. Do this with each thought, each feeling, each sensation, whether pleasurable, painful, or neutral. Even if you have joyous or enthusiastic thoughts or feelings, place each of them on a leaf and let it float by. If your thoughts momentarily stop, continue to watch the stream. Sooner or later, your thoughts will start up again. Allow the stream to flow at its own pace. Don't try and speed it up or rush your thoughts or feelings or sensations along. You are not trying to get rid of the leaves by rushing them along. You're not trying to get rid of your thoughts or your feelings or your sensations. You're allowing them to come and to go at their own pace. If your mind says, this is dumb, I'm bored, or I'm not doing this right, place those thoughts or feelings on leaves too and let them pass. If a leaf gets stuck, allow it to hang around until it's ready to float by. If a thought comes up again, watch it float up by another time. If a difficult or painful feeling arises, simply acknowledge it. Say to yourself, I notice myself having a feeling of boredom, impatience, frustration, worry, fear. Place those thoughts or feelings on these and allow them to float along. From time to time, your thoughts or feelings or sensations may hook you and distract you 
from being fully present in this exercise or in any exercise or any of our daily goings on, that's completely normal. As soon as you realize that you've become sidetracked, gently bring your attention back to the exercise. And ask you again to take a couple deep breaths, breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth, and just notice your body. Notice where you're seated, feeling yourself connected to the ground, feeling whatever is supporting your body. And then in the next few seconds, I'm gonna ask you to open your eyes and rejoin our webinar. And we'll continue with the rest of our content. I'm wondering if in the chat box, um, if you can just note what that was like for you. I don't know how many of you are meditators or often do some kind of mindfulness exercise. Um, and this is really different. This is kind of what we call, and some of you may have done that before, so I'm just wondering what your experience was like, what you noticed, um, if you're willing to share. And while we're doing this, just take a moment and think about how you might apply something like this too, right? To really think about how can I bring this to life um, in my day? When can I do something like this? What did I notice about my thoughts or feelings? What did I notice about my ability to observe those? Um, and just really the space for how this might come to life. Um, and then we'll talk more about the functionality of it. Um, so this is a piece. So JD, I don't know if you're seeing anything um, in the chat box that you wanna. We've got a couple messages. Um, one uh, that it was quite a relief, I guess, is the word to try it again. Um, one attendee, we often do that at school right before we start a class or test and it really feels good to de-stress. And another one just sent in, I found the visualization was great for my focus, one feeling at a time, allowing me to let them go. Awesome. Thank you. Um, you know, and just keep, I mean, keep thinking about that as we, as we go through. Um, and part of what, part of why I bring this up, right, is we often, um, our brains are so like fantastic, right? They are, um, you know, when you think about, you know, computers and everything we do now with AI or um, machine learning, right? That it's really, when we think about how hard that is to get computers to think as quickly as we do, our minds, tons come to our minds. And this is, um, it's just a great reminder to yourself, don't believe everything you think. Um, and a mantra I often use with my patients is just because you think it doesn't make it true. Um, and that it's one of those things of when we get stressed and we have anxiety, our mind is often hanging out in the future, worried about something that's coming up that we probably can't control. And we'll talk about that in a second, or it hangs out in the past of things that have happened to us. And so an exercise like this helps us look at our thoughts and our feelings and our sensations, you know, being able to almost like hold them in our hands as opposed to having them in front of our face like this, where we really can't see from our thoughts. And so it's putting them down um, and just letting them be. And it's such a simple exercise to really just let them be. If you, if you like this exercise, by the way, you can just Google leaves on a stream and you'll find tons of YouTube where someone will um, essentially read you what I just read you. Um, or there's also um, an activity you can do cloud, like, like thoughts on a cloud, thoughts or feelings on a cloud, where it's just, the idea is just to take your thoughts and make them separate from yourself. And we call this cognitive diffusion because often we're very fused with our thoughts. So just remembering that, um, don't believe everything you think.
So we're going to talk more about the power of present moment awareness. And I love um, whoever put in the chat box that you're, that before you take a test, um, you know, even if you have a teacher or professor who's leading you through this, it's fantastic. Um, you know, I think that more and more we're seeing more mindfulness and meditation, um, you know, make its way into education, which I think is fantastic because that's a great way to learn it. And we're also seeing it tons in corporate America, right? Um, where they're like when I was at Johnson and Johnson, there was a meditation room that you could sign out and there are groups doing meditation. Um, I, I do think there's something different about the leaves on a stream. And some of it is and the idea of the looking at your thoughts and looking at your feelings and your sensations as separate from you, um, as opposed to just focusing on the breath. And one thing I want to make sure we talk about, right, is that if you do meditation and mindfulness, I think that's great. And it it's not, the function is a little bit differently from in what we're going to be talking about, right? It's not just the breathing. And some people think about it as relaxation. It has that function for sure. I think of that as like a nice little side effect. Um, really the power of present moment is in this intentional awareness, really being aware in the moment and seeing what's going on. Um, and noticing when our attention is pulled away from us and when it's back. Um, so as it means a way of example, even when I was doing that, I was very present and focused with you all. Um, and I could hear um, the home office is across the, sh the street. It's across the, I wish it was across the street. It's across the hall. And I can hear my husband's on a conference call. Um, and I, you know, I noticed the thought of, man, I wish he would have closed the door. Um, I could hear my eight-year-old running up and down um, because this is the life we're in, right? Where there's lots of things at home that are pulling for our attention. And so I just noticed that. I even noticed the feeling I was having and then bringing myself back into the moment to be here present with you all. Um, I'm going to share with you, this is kind of when I was putting together this presentation, this is kind of like my, um, my best of, my favorites. Um, if I were going to make sort of a, you know, a playlist, this is like the coping skills, my top favorite playlist. And I don't know how many of you follow the Awkward Yeti. Um, I love this cartoonist. I think he does such a great job. And I particularly love his cartoons where he pivots or, um, the brain against the heart. And so our brain says, you know, I don't know what the future holds. I don't know how many of you are having that thought on a regular basis. I certainly find myself all the time thinking about the future, um, wondering about the future, worrying about the future. What's the summer going to look like? What's the fall going to look like? Are kids going back to school in person? Are colleges going to reopen? Um, you know, when is life going to go back to normal? And it just, you can just feel yourself tense um, when, you know, you might even feel it in your chest. And he, so heart says, you know what, just hold one moment at a time with me. And so it's, you know, a lot of times it's just be here now. Um, you know, sit and know you're sitting. Just be present and stay in the moment. The reality is in most times, the moment that we're in is not so terrible. Um, so the moment I'm sitting in, if I close my eyes and I could hear birds chirping, the windows open, um, I get to be here with you guys on a Friday, um, you know, there's a, there's a long weekend coming up. Um, and so it's just, I'm being here in this moment, right? Just right here, right now. So just hold this moment. Just sit, know you're sitting and just be here now. And so this is another cartoon I've seen on the internet for years. And I, I love it um, because it really brings to life the idea of, you know, is your mind full? Are you actually being mindful um, and really being present and enjoying the moment? So just like I heard the birds chirping, right? And just, but then bringing myself back to where I want my attention to be right now. So again, thinking about how you might apply this in your life, how you might bring this to life, how you can be really present and aware and really leveraging the power of present moment awareness. And we're bringing this here today because it really does help our well-being. 
you know, our emotional well-being, sometimes even our social well-being. We'll talk a little bit about communication today, just we'll touch on it. But even being present when you're talking with someone, present on a webinar, um, when you're talking with your significant other, um, I, you know, I find myself, I'm guilty of it when I'm, you know, sitting with my daughter, she'll have to say, hey, hey, mama, like, you know, I'm, t- I'm talking to you. And I was like, oh, you know, I'm, I was on my phone. Um, or I, I let my mind or attention drift, or I was trying to do too many things at the same time. And I actually wasn't present. Um, you know, and I'm a huge dog person. So I love, I love this little cartoon. So JD, I'm just going to stop and see if there's anything we need to attend to in the chat or Q&A before I move forward. There are no new questions. All right, fantastic, thank you. Feel free to interrupt me, but I'll also stop just to um, make sure I don't get on some train. So what I wanted to acknowledge and validate here is that what we're experiencing is is actually quite different. Um, so I um, my training is in cognitive behavioral therapy um, and a lot of, and so what you'll always get from me is the most evidence-based research, research supported practices. And for sure, if you have any anxiety or stress, one of the things we often tell you to do is exposure therapy. Um, and so I love this um, cartoon, you know, why did the chicken cross the road? My therapist says I should do more things that scare me, um, which is true. So if I were working with you before COVID-19 and you were afraid of something, you and I would work together to approach that anxiety and that fear so that we could eventually train your brain that anxiety and stress is uncomfortable and it's not dangerous. Um, And so, you know, right before COVID-19, I was working with one of my patients on uh, driving phobia. She was afraid to drive. And so we developed a hierarchy. We did more things that scared her. She had homework um, and eventually she was driving. In fact, you know, now now that we're still working together on, you know, maintaining her well-being and dealing with, with COVID-19 related stress and interesting situations, um, she's still driving to keep up, to, to kind of do those things that scare her to make sure she doesn't um, revert to being afraid. But this is so different because I'm not going to sit here and tell you, oh, you're afraid of getting COVID-19. Sure, go let someone who has it and is positive cough in your face. Like, absolutely, you're afraid to go face your fears. That, that's ridiculous because there is legitimate fear here. There's a, there is a legitimate risk and a safety concern. Um, and so we handle stress and anxiety very different in this current setting than we would in other ones. And this is a piece of thinking about, like, before COVID-19, there were all these things that you might worry about. And then there was a subset of things that actually could happen because our mind loves to like worry about tons of stuff that's actually not, um, not even possible or likely. Um, And then there was this tiny little thing, you know, of actually things that do happen. And so we would waste a lot of our energy and time worrying. The thing that's challenging now is that that yellow dot of things that do happen has actually expanded quite a bit. Um, And there's a lot of uncertainty though, right? Between the things that can happen and the things that do happen. And there's a lot of confusion. Um, and so this is this is different, right? And so that's why I, I just want you to take a moment to be gentle with yourself, gentle with others, that this is completely uncharted territory. I mean, I get we're in week, I think we're in week 10, um, at least where I, where I sit, right? I realize this is a global community and we're all kind of at different pieces um, of our experience with COVID-19. Um, And we're, but we're still testing and learning. Um, This is uncharted territory where we're all stuck at home um, and we're doing things that just feel very unnatural, right? Um, Like I went for a run this morning. It feels very unnatural to me um, to run past someone and to avoid them, right? To literally like get off the path um, so that I don't, in fact, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a super hyper social person. Um, you know, I'm one of those extroverted people who are, um, you know, used to being around people all the time. I'm the kind of person who would run usually and be like, Hey, good morning. Like high five, like that, look at us out here doing this. 
and I, like it actually like I I had that thought this morning and I was like oh I can't I can't even like be within ten feet of someone let alone high five them um, and so that lack of communication or social connection is is really tough and so this is one of the things I'm going to start to encourage you to do and using your mindful awareness right so again leveraging that present moment awareness thinking about where your mind is at really focusing on things that you can influence and ones that are in your control. Um, and to give you a sense within the COVID-19 um, context, there's, so if you think about, so this is another, um, you know, piece of art that came up um, in the COVID-19 setting, right? If you look on the outside, things that you can't control, so things that you can let go and kind of move down the stream, and they may come they may come at you, right? It's not, we can't stop them from coming, these thoughts or these urges, um, but I can't control how much toilet paper is at the store. Um, I can't control whether or not I can get bread flour. Um, you know, I, I can't control how long this is gonna last. I really can't. All I can control is my own attitude. Um, I can manage my own social distancing. Um, I can control how I live into my values, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, and again, thinking back to that, you know, those buckets of well-being, I can control where I'm focusing my attention and how much attention I'm giving to each bucket to keep them full. Um, you know, I can control to a certain degree how much fun things we get to do at home. Um, and, you know, with a child at home, I'm, I'm always working hard in that domain, <laughs> just trying to keep her busy. But I can't control how much other people's social distance. Um, I can't control what other people are doing or their motives. I can only control what I'm doing. And so it's really using that mindful awareness to think about, well, where where is my mind? Um, and am I ruminating or worrying about what other people are doing? And I can only control myself. Um, so living in New Jersey, we're entering a holiday weekend. Um, and so it's you know, thinking about, oh, are people going to go down to the Jersey Shore and the beaches and what are they going to do? And I can let my mind go there and I can get frustrated and agitated. And there's really nothing I can control about that. All I can control is what I choose to do. And so, again, be thinking about how this can apply to you, how this might relate to some of what you have going on in your own world and where you are exerting your energy and efforts and really thinking about, is it worth it? And putting, you know, focusing on, is it worth it? Is it consistent with my values? Is it gonna get me to my end goal? And then leveraging yourself and moving yourself back to what you can control, what matters, moving in directions that are important to you. Um, and so just really thinking about that. There, there is a note about limiting your social media or turning off the news. And I do think about, you know, really protecting yourself against social toxins or, you know, we're really good about protecting ourselves. We wear our masks. I always um, have hand sanitizer with me. I'm very careful about social distancing. Um, and it's, it, it's equally important to be careful about the, social toxins, the anxiety, the things that I might come into contact with on social media um, or on the news. And so I frankly don't watch a ton of news. Um, I try and keep up on the most important pieces of data that, and I try and listen to scientists who I think are actually valid and reliable um, so that I'm understanding exactly what's going on and not um, some spin that's been put on it. Dr. Drapkin, we have one question. If right now is a good sure. time to interrupt. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So the question is, how do you know if you're making progress with respect to something that scares you? Might be doing something, or more of something that scares me and still feeling scared, but how do I know I'm on the right path? Oh, so that's a great question. Um, and it's, there's not an easy answer, but let me, let me give you, or let me answer that the, the best way my head will let me right now, um, which is my short answer is to measure it, right? And to, well, to kind of like track it, right? So if I'm doing something that scares me, so for example, the, let me give you the paradigm with the, the driving, right? We, we create um, something called the subjective units of the stress scale. It, 
it's really as simple as just saying from zero to 100, where is my stress at, for me in particular. Um, and so when I'm driving with my patient, I'm always asking her, okay, where's your suds at? And we're, we're kind of tracking that it's going down. The, the interesting thing is people often predict that a situation is going to be more um, anxiety producing than it is. Um, and so it's really, so that's part of why we encourage you to face your fears, right? Because so even, I mean, if we use the example of um, the current context, right? And so it, I think about sometimes going to the grocery store is pretty stressful. Um, it just, it's, it's just, it's stressful on a couple different levels. Like the, the first couple of times I went, I don't even know like what I'm doing, right? Like I don't, I'm not sure. I think the first, first time I went, um, people weren't even wearing masks yet. So we were quarantining, um, but we weren't wearing masks yet. And so the second time I went, I, but I was like, I'm not sure I'm wearing the mask, right? Like there was all this social anxiety almost about how do I behave in the grocery store? But each time I go, it's not nearly as bad. And it wasn't even as bad after I got there. I was like, oh, you know, it's actually this makes sense. They make it, they make it make sense for you. Um, and so every time you go, you're kind of like, just, you know, again, it's like, I think about like taking your heart rate or taking your temperature. It's the same idea of just assessing yourself. We used to think that you needed to see a decrease in that anxiety to really um, believe that it's working. But our latest research really thinks that, well, if you it's really what you're learning, right? So after every one of those instances of approaching the fear thing, it's what did I learn about that while I was doing it? Or what was my experience like? And maybe maybe I was worried about it going in and then it wasn't so bad. Um, or what did I learn about how I could cope with it and manage it effectively? Um, you know, obviously it's a little bit more complicated than that, but I think those are the two pieces of really just, again, taking your own temperature, checking in with yourself before, during, after you're doing something that's fearful or afraid or brings any kind of anxiety. Um, and then also at the end of it, what, what did you take away? What did you learn about that experience? Um, it's, you know, it's no different than um, almost any time I give one of these workshops, I'm, I'm doing almost exactly that, right? I'm thinking about, um, you know, how did I do during it? I might even watch the video to kind of like think about what I can improve. And then next time, hopefully I'll be more on point, um, you know, be able to come to it um, with a different lens and, and continue to improve. So it's like the same idea with fear and anxiety. It's really approaching learning and then applying that going forward. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, I just wanted to take a moment to sort of um, acknowledge that we often have this illusion of control. Um, so if I say to you, don't think of a pink elephant, don't think of COVID-19, don't think of COVID, the, the pink elephant riding COVID-19, um, any of those things, the minute I say that, you have this amazing ability in your brain with the language that now you are thinking of a pink elephant even if it wasn't on the screen, you would have had one in your mind. Um, and I'm not even sure what a pink elephant looks like riding COVID-19, but like I I sort of just pictured it in my head on top of like um, the words COVID-19, you might've pictured it on top of the virus. It, it's amazing what our minds can do. But if we say, stop it, don't think about that, it actually forces us to think about it more strongly. And so there's this illusion of control that we can stop thinking and we can, um, force these things not to come into our frame of reference. It, it just, you can't. That's what I love about the leaves on a stream is that thoughts, feelings, and sensations can exist and move and we don't push them away. The minute we try and push them away, they actually kind of, they actually come forward even stronger. And so think about a beach ball that you might push below the um, the water. You know, you push it below, you push it below. The minute you let it go or let go of that, control, it pops up in your face, right? And that is the illusion of control. And so just be gentle with yourself that we really can't stop ourselves from thinking we or having feelings. We can't stop these from coming. It's just changing our relationship with those thoughts, feelings, and sensations when they do come. And that is where the control and the power is to really change and impact our well-being. 
I felt like this presentation wouldn't be complete without just a mention of compassion and self-compassion, which is a little bit of even what I just talked about, right? It's just being gentle on yourself, um, recognizing that when you're, recognize when you're stressed, um, recognizing and being mindful, again, that present moment awareness, being kind to yourself, um, and really feeling like you're connected to other people, doing that in ways that you can. You are not alone. We are all in this soup together. We are not perfect. Um, many of us are very like self-critical, perfectionists. We're trying to perf perfectly manage and during COVID-19, you know, maintain our high level of work ethic, um, take care of our families and our homes. It, it is really tough. So my, I may implore you to be gentle with yourself, practice some self-compassion. There's a lot of literature out there on self-compassion. Um, Kristen Neff, um, NEFF, is one of the leaders in this area, and you can definitely look up and um, even do some mindfulness meditations on self-compassion. Just be kind to yourself. Um, oftentimes, we are our harshest critic, and we are most judgmental with our ourselves, and so this is really just taking a moment, recognizing the soup that we're in and how tough it is. Um, and just, you know, and just be, right? This is, you know, again, just be. There's also, there's a lot of talk about acceptance. Um, and so I just wanted to take a moment, really, when I think of acceptance, to me, it's not resignation. It's really just accepting that something just is. Um, and so when it's raining outside, you can say, I don't like the rain. I wish it wasn't raining. I was gonna go for a run. Now I can't go for a run. Uh, it's always like this. It always rains when I want it to be sunny. Rain, rain. Ugh, this is so awful. Or you can look outside and it's raining and you're like, yep, it's raining. It's just, it's, it, yep, we are in quarantine mode. Yep, we're going to be home for a while. Yep. And it, it doesn't mean you can't have those moments of like, you know, some self-pity or a moment of pity party. And it doesn't really help us to have um, this experience with, you know, I can't, I can't believe this is happening. This is so wrong. Like all of the rants that we hear, yes, I get it. And it is what it is, right? And here we are. Um, and this is a space since the beginning of COVID-19, um, I've tried to sit in the space of like, oh, here we are. So I'm going to make the best of it. I'm going to set up this little makeshift office in the corner of a room um, so that I have a space to see my patients virtually um, and to do some of my work. It is what it is. Yep. I don't have a dining room anymore because my daughter, that's like essentially her school room. Um, it is what it is. Here we are. Um, and it, it's just, it's one of those things where you can choose, like it's the choice, right? And again, this is the awareness of, where are our thoughts at? Where is our minds sitting? And to that note, this is one of my favorite Venn diagrams in the world. Um, I use this all the time. And again, it's a mindfulness piece of really just being aware of where your emotions are at um, and where your emotional mind is at. And are you hanging out there with like feelings, stress, anxiety, or is your mind hanging out in this more reasonable side where you're more like, very being very cognitive thoughtful staying on very the surface statistics you know a lot of us um kind of tend towards one side or another um and the idea here is to have awareness of where your mind is hanging out um, and to try and leverage the other side to pull yourself into what we call wise mind um where yes i feel this way and i know this and so let me just make a choice um or be really in the moment um, in a wise-minded space. So this is just really a trigger to kind of think about or a framework to see where your mind is hanging out. Um, you know, as an aside, I often see couples kind of struggle where one hangs out more on the emotional side and one hangs out more on the reasonable, rational side. Um, I'm a psychologist married to an engineer. Um, and so this is often where, you know, I think we're we're very respectful of each other. So we, we work it out, but I, sometimes I know he's very like, not, he's thinking very like logically where I'm, I'm on the other side. And so we try and pull that together. 
I wanted to just put this out there because I feel like this is a great little checklist to kind of think about how are you doing? Like, again, going back to that, how do I survive this pandemic? And so it's really thinking about this like to-do list. Am I doing the essential tasks, um, showering, medication, whatever else you need to do on a daily basis? Um, I love the idea um, of cleaning one thing or space a day. And for, you know, this could be the dishes. Um, it could just be dusting something. Um, you know, we recently just got a um, one of the vacuum robots, which like we're loving. Um, so we're letting her clean one space <laughs> or thing a day. But it just, there is something, there's a sense of accomplishment. Um, and then the idea of tending to something growing, right? Like that, to me, that is such an investment in the future where you get to see a plant grow um, or to work with a child and really watch their mind grow. Um, and so it's really lots of value there. Um, and we talked a bunch about mindfulness already, but really thinking about um, what you want to be present to and even just stopping and just listening to a sound, really mindfully listen to a song, maybe even actually listen to the words of a song. Um, and then think about reaching out to someone beyond your home. You know, maybe just one, again, this is a daily list, right? So once a day, um, I try and I have a list of colleagues and mentors and people who I, like, who pop in my mind, and I'm actually just taking the time to reach out and say, hey, how are you doing? Um, you know, or dropping off something um, to someone, you know, in a socially distanced, no contact way, but like really being able to connect with someone. And then again, I've mentioned this before, and I think it's important here is do one thing that gets your heart rate up um, and and then do something that you'll be glad you did later. So this is kind of, you know, what would your future self um, thank you for? And so thinking about your one of the pillars of well-being that we often talk about, right, is growth. And so what are you doing to grow during this time um, and really being intentional about that? So let's just talk briefly about getting your heart rate up. Um, you know, I think uh, one of the things we talk about is doing microburst between meetings and sessions. And so really making sure that you're, you're actually moving. So you're not just sitting, um, maybe you're standing during a meeting. I try and personally stop um, my meetings five or 10 minutes before the hour. So I realize like we're there now. Um, but stop and really just, I actually get up, I go downstairs, I maybe fill up my water glass. Um, but I'm now running down the stairs, running, checking on my daughter, running back upstairs, and I've gotten my heart rate going a little bit every hour. Um, and my Apple Watch is great at, like, reminding me about that, too. Um, and just wanted to make a reminder about sleep and really making sure that you're getting that that's a great place to take your temperature, check in on yourself. Um, there's lots of, uh, and this is, a lot of people are reporting struggles with sleep, so be gentle on yourself with that. Um, and being grateful, you know, what are you grateful for and being really, um, thoughtful about that, um, you know, and thinking about how can you apply this within your homes or family? Um, we often will stop and at dinner ask about, you know, what the highlight of our day was. We do something called the rose, bud, and thorn. So we ask what the rose of our day was, um, what the thorn, the low point was, and what we're looking forward to and really just bringing that like forward so that we're focusing on not just what we're missing out on um, and also what we're gaining during this time. And there's been a lot of silver linings of this pandemic, especially those of you that work in the tech field. Um, I've been really impressed with how agile we really have become um, and how quickly things are moving. I'm, I'm very sensitive to our time and I don't want us to run over. So I just want to make a quick note about values, thinking about what matters to you really and when you're taking that temperature and you're thinking about that well-being, those buckets of well-being, what else can you do? Where do you need to um, really pivot? What what aren't you taking care of? Um, and it might be yourself, right? Um, we have, you know, we have the saying, the metaphor of, you know, probably the last time you fly, you remember that we often are told to put our oxygen masks on first before we help anyone else. How often do we do that in our lives where we really take care of ourselves um, on top of taking care of everyone else? And so it's really thinking about those different buckets of um, values. And then thinking about communication, right? Really listening to the people around you, not just at home, but at work. Really mindfully listening. So using your present moment awareness skills and communication helps out a lot. 
collaborating, using your compassion, self-compassion, validating and empathizing. You know, I have an eight-year-old who's losing her mind over what I might perceive is sometimes stupid stuff. Um, and I try not to minimize her experience. Even if I don't agree with it, I try and see it through her eyes, validate her. Um, it doesn't mean I give in. It means I just am present for her and present with her to try and help her see that I get it. I get it. I try and get it. Um, and so it's really just leaning into that. And this is an old proverb. It's been around for a long time. Um, and just kind of thinking about, you know, starting to wrap us up here of, again, the silver linings. Um, you know, a, a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor. And what we're going through right now, we are going to come out of this with some amazing skills and tools and ways of managing stress and anxiety that we've never had before because we're being challenged to do so. Um, you know, and I think it's, it, it's really just constantly checking in with yourself, what's working for you, what's not. Maybe something that worked for you for the last two weeks, you need to change. Like, this is an agile environment. Test and learn. Um, what, you know, quick to fail. We are figuring it out as, as an individual, as an organization, as a team, as a world. Um, and so being gentle. And the other piece is really just, just breathe. This is a chapter. It's not your whole story. Um, and so the minute we catastrophize and really worry about everything that's going on, try and pull yourself back into this moment and that this is a chapter we're all experiencing and this is not going to define us in the way that you, your mind may tell you um, and really worry. So I'm going to stop there. Um, this is just some ways to reach out to me. Um, and I'm, I'm open. We have, we have just a few minutes left. So, um, so if we have any Q&A or anything going on. Um, and then these are some resources. Um, and I also, you know, we'll make these slides available for you all so you can reference anything that we did. And I know the recording will eventually be available. So JD, my friend, I don't know if there's anything that we want to make sure we tackle in the last few minutes. If anybody has any questions, now would be the perfect time to get them in. Uh, looks like we have about three minutes left. So speak now or forever hold your peace. Uh, <laughs> Mike, I'll hand it over to you to close out. Uh, if you're finished, Dr. Drapkin. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, first of all, thank you. Hold on, Mike. Mike, your 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 audio is not not good, and um, it looks like we we do have a question that just came up as well. Oh, I'll be quiet then. JD, you want to handle this? <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, reading it to. Let me see if I can. Okay, I'll I'll just read it verbatim. Um, previously, I would have potentially more physical locations where I could escape to slash from work, open source, family, friends, private time, etc. Now these have been reduced even more so when the weather is poor. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yep, it's raining. And if <laughs> I need escape, I escape from everything. And this has caused me to miss important virtual meetings, meetups, one bill, work chat, volunteer opportunities. I'm still trying to figure out a way to accomplish this and was wondering if you had any ways to help. Hmm. Yeah, that, I mean, so thank you, JD, for reading that. Um, you know, it, it is really, so it is so tough, um, I, so tough um, that we're all stuck in a similar physical location with family, right? And so, and it just finding, um, in fact, I, like, I, I think pretty regularly complain to my husband about exactly this, um, that I don't have a space that feels like my own where I can like close the door. I mean, of course I have our bedroom, but like, you know, he also shares that. So I find what a lot of patients that I'm working with are doing. Um, and I, you know, I do this myself is I do take walks. I also take walks in the rain, right? Like, and then I'll take a mindful walk in the rain. Um, people, I don't, and I don't know where, um, 
the person lives, but people are also, they'll get in their cars. So whether you have a car or not, but a car seems to be like a safe space that people are finding to get a little bit of um, quiet time. The bathroom, which feels very old school, right? Like we all used to go to the bathroom to get a little bit of peace and quiet, but I've, I've done sessions with patients in the bathroom. Um, sometimes even just, so think about, I think thinking creatively about where you can go um, to hide away without avoidance, right? And so part of what I would say, um, and, and part of what the person was asking is, I, I just wanna say, I know this is really hard. Um, and, I'm, and I'm guessing part of what you're struggling with is that is not, um, is letting it get too bad, right? And so it's really, again, it's taking that temperature. Um, one of my favorite metaphors is thinking about uh, um, a pot of water boiling. And thinking about it's always on the stove and ideally we want it to be on the stove without the heat on but the reality is it's always a little bit hot right because a little we're always a little bit stressed there's always a little bit like if i wasn't stressed i wouldn't be worried about the fact that like the noon hour just hit right and so it's there's a little bit of stress but i don't want it boiling so much that i can't be articulate in this last minute and so the idea is catching it before you're at a rolling boil that you feel like you need to avoid or miss things that have significant consequences. And so taking that regular temperature check on yourself every morning, how am I doing? What do I need? Where's it going? You know, what do I need to do today? Um, and communicating. And that's part of why I very intentionally included that communication. I know we don't have a ton of time to spend in any of those coping, but thinking about communicating with the people in your household, with your team members, everyone, if you just say, I need, I'm struggling, I'm having a hard time, I often find that those are really met with people want to be helpful. The thing is thinking about, well, what do you need? What would be helpful? And maybe just say, you know what, I need, I need an hour to myself um, in a space. I just need to be, I just need to do me for an hour. Um, and or whatever you need, but thinking about that. Um, and so I would say that's my best, <laughs> my best answer in, the, in our last like minute. But I think it's a really great question. And I think we're all struggling with that. Like we have no privacy um, at all. Right. It's really, it's really tough. Um, hang, hang in there. Um, and, you know, just be as creative as you can try uh, test and learn. Right. Try different places to get some of that privacy. Thanks, JD. All right. Well, we're a few minutes over, so I think it's it's time to wrap up. So thank you to JD uh, for managing that, and again, thank you, uh, Dr. Drapkin, for uh, the presentation. And I will mention that there will be a transcript available um, at some point in the very near future. Uh, and so when the video is posted, hopefully, we'll, the transcript will be uh, at the same time or shortly thereafter. And with that, I think we will wrap this up. And um, so thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day.